Hi, welcome back to the Abbott After School Sessions. We continue to get some great questions from everybody. This one is from Paula Gupana. The question is, in terms of workflow, what do you do when you get the elements after the picture lock? Well, what we do uh, is have a meeting with the sound team. We'll get together with the supervising sound editor, uh, the effects editor, the dialogue editors, and we just look at the project and uh, what the scope and vision of that project is going to be. And then afterwards, we'll lay out uh, a template, uh, depending on how many tracks everybody is going to deliver. The dialogue editor gets that template. Uh, our effects editors get the template from the effects mixer. And that way, when we get into the mix, there are no surprises. We've got everybody communicating with each other, which is really important. And it really helps the projects to go very, very smoothly. Next question we get is from uh, David uh, Benevent Sandra. And his question is, when you're mixing audio for cinema, how do you manage to get effects and music to sound so clear and separate it without masking each other? Well, the first thing that I do is take a dialogue pass and uh, go through all of the dialogue and clean it up and balance it out. And then I'll take a music pass. And with the music, we get a lot of uh, flexibility because we get the music delivered in stems where you know we will have different elements of the music separated out and uh, do a pass against the dialogue with the music and then we'll do an effects pass with everything. Now a good mixing team will always recognize what's going to be the predominant factor or the predominant element in a particular scene. So if it's going to be music, um, the effects mixer will uh, balance against that. If it's going to be effects, I'll balance the music against that. So uh, that is really important uh, when you're doing a pass on it and just getting a good partner to work with you is very, very important. Uh, next question is, I'm studying audio production within radio, television, and digital media. I just worked on post sound and Foley for a short film. And what I'm most curious about is your approach to the ADR and the Foley and um, as well, what has been the most challenging that, um, in terms of sound that you've had and the strategy that you took to create those sounds? Well, um, as far as the ADR goes, that's always a challenge because you want to save as much of the production as possible. But when you use the ADR, you have to really um, match it into the production uh, with reverb and EQ. And what I like to use is Revibe and the Massenberg EQs. I found them to be great tools in getting the ADR to be as seamless as possible and not jarring you out of the production. Same thing goes with Foley. When you're uh, mixing Foley in, it has to really become a part of the production sound. And uh, room simulators always, and EQ, are a big part of uh, the tools that you use to to create that. As far as the most challenging project I've had to work on with sound, it's it's been unquestionably lost. I did Lost for all six seasons and uh, our challenges came with that show in the sense that we were creating a lot of things with sound design like the monster or when the planes were breaking apart um, and um, it was also challenging in that show to work on the dialogue because with the dialogue we'd have these beach scenes that they would be shooting and um, if they pointed the mic one way you were getting all the waves crashing in and uh, getting um, on the dialogue if they pointed the mic the other way away from the beach we had a super highway uh, behind uh, a lot of the actors and um, it was challenging to get rid of a lot of that traffic there was a military base that was nearby so we'd get helicopters flying in over and so they were tremendous challenges to keep the dialogue clean and clear. Um, and at the same time, you know, with all of those challenges, that's one of the shows that I'm most proud of um, as far as the sound on the show goes. So I look forward 
to um, answering more of your questions next week, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you then.